Hello dears, how are you all? Welcome to our YouTube channel Swapna Raj Story. We brings a new interesting learning story. So please watch the video till the end. Before starting the video we request you that. If you are new in our channel, then please subscribe our YouTube channel. To inspire us please like the video and share with your friends that they can listen interesting learning stories. Oh, let's enjoy. Yes, tell me. So I want to listen a story. Because I am so irritated with works. Oh dear. Listen. The Golden Touch. Nathaniel Hawthorne is the writer of story. Beings have fascination for gold. Unusual greed for gold and whites. Sorrow, doesn't it? Hawthorne's story The Golden Two Watch narrates the misery of a legendary king who suffered for his desire to amass gold. Long ago, there lived a very rich man called Midas. Besides being rich, he was a king and he had a little daughter called Marigold. King Midas loved gold more than anything else in the world. He liked being a king, chiefly because he loved his golden crown. He loved his daughter dearly too. And the more he loved her, the more gold he wanted for her sake. He saw the golden light of the sun at evening, he wished it could turn everything into real gold. When Marigold came to him with a bunch of sweet yellow flowers, he would say, if they were as golden as they look, they would be worth picking. Even the roses in his garden did not please him any more the largest and sweetest and most beautiful roses ever seen, because they were not made of gold. And although the king was very fond of music in his youth, the only music he loved now was the sound of gold coins, one against another. At last, King Midas could not bear to touch anything that was not gold. He used to go down to a secret room under his palace where he kept his precious store. He would let himself in and count his gold pieces. He would hold the bars of gold and admire his gold cups and plates until he could hardly bear to leave them. Now in those days a great many wonderful things used to happen just as they do today. One morning King Midas was in his treasure room when he noticed that the sun was shining into the room more brightly than usual. Not only that, but a stranger stood there, smiling at him in the light of the sunbeam. King Midas knew that he had locked himself in as usual, and so he guessed that his visitor was no ordinary person. What's happened then? The stranger looked at the gold pieces that the king was counting. You seem to be a very rich man. But it has taken me a long time to collect this gold, said King Midas. If I could live a thousand years, I might have time to get richer. What? Aren't you satisfied? What else do you want? Asked the stranger. Midas thought carefully. This was a wonderful chance, and he felt that the stranger had magical powers. I am tired of collecting my riches so slowly. I wish everything I touch could be turned into gold. The golden touch. He said, exclaimed the stranger. I assure you would never regret it. How could I regret such a thing? It would give me perfect happiness at last. Very well, then. Tomorrow at sunrise, you will find that you have the golden touch. 
the stranger said as he turned to go. The light of the sunbeam brightened so vividly that Midas closed his eyes. When he opened them again, the stranger had gone. How did King Midas feel when his desire for turning everything into gold was fulfilled? I will tell you. Listen. Next morning, King Midas awoke before the dawn. He looked eagerly to see if his bed had been turned into gold. But no, it was exactly as it had been before. He lay, very disappointed, looking around his room. Suddenly, the earliest sunbeam of the rising sun shone through the window. And up to the ceiling above, it seemed to reflect its golden light towards him. Looking at the sheet on his bed, Midas was astonished to find that it had become cloth of gold. The golden touch had truly come to him with the first sunbeam. King Midas got out of bed in excitement. He touched one of the legs of Thay. Bed as he did so and it immediately became a golden pillar. He pulled the curtain at the window and at once it became golden too. He put on his clothes and found himself dressed in golden cloth. He took up his spectacles and put them on, and he found he could see nothing at all. The glasses had turned into gold and he could not see through them. He took them off again. Never mind, he thought to himself. The golden touch is worth more than a pair of spectacles and Marigold will be able to read to me. King Midas went downstairs and into the garden. He noticed that even the brass handle of the door became gold as soon as he turned it. Then he went among the rose trees that had always been his pride and joy in the past. When he went into breakfast that morning, he felt more hungry than usual. While he was waiting for his eggs to be ready, little Marigold came in crying bitterly. Look, father, she cried, holding out a golden rosé. Look, father, I went to pick you some rosen. They are yellow and hard, and their sweet scent is gone. Never mind, my dear. They are worth much more like that. Sit down, and eat your breakfast said her father. He poured himself a cup of coffee as he spoke. The coffee pot was a golden one when he put it back on the table. Then he tried a spoonful of coffee to see if it was sweet enough. But it had become liquid gold. What's happened then? Well, he explained. He was thirsty. What is the matter? Father. Nothing, child. Drink your milk. The eggs that he tried to eat, the fish, the bread, the butter, all the food was uneatable. How am I to have any breakfast? Such costly food is before me, and I can eat nothing. He looked across the table at Marigol. She was eating happily, her tears forgotten. She looked up, saw that something was wrong, and came round to comfort her father. She asked, What is wrong, father? Midas bent down and kissed his little daughter. Then what a terrible change came over. Marigold. Her sweet little face turned to yellow gold, her lovely hair became golden metal, her little body hardened into a figure of solid gold. What had he done? How do you expect the story to end? I think he was disappointed so he regret but 
does King Midas repent for his desire for gold? This story would be too sad for us all if we lingered too long on this terrible sight. King Midas could not bear to look at Marigold, yet he could not leave her side. He felt so sad and sorrowful that he wished he was the poorest man in all the world, if only his beloved daughter could be herself again. In despair, Midas looked about him. Suddenly he saw the stranger that had visited him. The day before, the stranger said, Well Midas, how do you like having the golden touch? I have lost everything I really loved. Dot, I am full of sorrow and regret. Gold is of no use to me now. So you have learned something since yesterday. Now which is worth more the golden touch or a cup of cold water? I, blessed water, exclaimed Midas. Will I ever taste it again? The golden touch or a piece of bread? The stranger said, A piece of bread, answered Midas, is worth all the gold on earth. Gold or your own little daughter? Asked the stranger. I, my child, my child. Cried poor Midas. I would not have given one hair of her head for the power to change the whole earth into gold. The stranger looked seriously at King Midas. He said, You are wiser than you were. Your heart is still flesh and blood. You know truly that the common things of life, which are within everyone's reach, are more valuable than riches. Tell me, do you want to keep the golden touch? No, it is hateful to me now, said Midas passionately. A fly settled on the king's nose and immediately fell to the floor, a small scrap of gold. Midas shuddered, then said the stranger, Then go down to the end of your garden, and wash yourself in the water of the river there. Then bring some of the same water and sprinkle it over anything that you wish to change back again. If you do this, truly and sincerely, you can set right again the results of your greed of gold. King Midas bowed his head. When he looked up again, the stranger had vanished. The king ran at once to the river. Without waiting to take off his clothes, he dived in. In the coolness of the water, he felt at once that a weight had been lifted from his heart and body. He came out of the river. He was free of the golden touch. He put out his hand and touched a wild rose on the river's bank, and he found with thankfulness that it remained the same sweet flower. Taking up a water pot, he quickly filled it with river water and took it back to the palace. Expect the servants thought it very strange to see their royal master carrying a water pot, but that water was more precious to Midas than an ocean of gold. The king went straight to the golden figure of little Marigold. As he sprinkled the water on her, the rosy color came back to her cheeks. She began to sneeze and shake the water from her golden hair. Oh, father, see how wet I am and my dress was clean this morning. She said, Marigold did not know what had happened to her, and her father did not tell her how. Wrong and foolish he had been. He took her out into the garden, where they watered the flowers. Together and picked a bunch of sweetly scented roses. Really this is so interesting story I ever listened. Thank you so much. Please like, share and subscribe our YouTube channel to stay connected with us.
to get the fastest notifications of our interesting videos press the bell icon and on all notifications. Bye bye, see you in the next video.